<laughs> so cute. So I don't shoot much at night time on the farm. Obviously, because you can't get a very good picture, but you put a heat lamp in for her. So she's quite happy in there. All the babes are hatched. A little bit of food. I think she's going to do very well. She's nice and safe from predators. And I figured I'd go one step further and put a mosquito net around her. Because the pults are very sensitive to mosquito bites. So this will protect and make sure the mosquitoes don't get in. Looks comfy in there, doesn't it? Nice and warm and no mosquitoes. We're not taking any chances this time, guys. And just over here, you can hear the beautiful insects at night time here. Beautiful. There's all the chicks under their light. Very happy, a happy flock. So update on the old farmhouse. We've got the electrician here first. Because obviously before we can do everything, we need to get the electrics done. Back of Damo's head there on the camera. This here, and then we're gonna put a switch box in. And he's having a little look upstairs too. Oh, so we have light. We have light up here. Oh, my new Nila. Get my new Kang Lang. So we have a light, working plugs upstairs. So as I did mention in previous vlogs, this is going to be a slow project, bit by bit. I think the next step we're going to start to drill a well and we want to show you how that's done here. I remember when we first built the cottage, or we first started to develop our land over there, the first thing we did was attach water, to put water in there. Um, we attached it to our well that we'd already dug. This one needs a whole well dug new for it, so we can pump the water then and have a constant, regular, strong supply of water. So the water has also just been turned on and we've got a little bit of flooding all around this area so it's not going in the house or anything but, but it's a bit soggy and that's because the pipe is actually broken and somebody's fixed it here by putting a bottle on it. So they've just stuck a bottle on it to stop it and if you took that bottle off all the water just comes squirting out. So we do have water uh, but we will be drilling a well as the first step here on the land. Fortunately we've had a few dying chickens. One of our silkies has passed and two of our Rhode Island Reds. Uh, this one in here is quite sick and so <clears throat> I've been to consult a vet and they've given me some stepomycin. So this is apparently quite a strong, I don't know if it is an antibiotic but it's a strong medicine and this is definitely an antibiotic and this one has to be dripped into the mouth one by one and I think we'll start with this one here. Hopefully we can bring it back from the brink. Um, what's happening with them is they're getting quite weak and they are kind of just falling over. And with chickens, you never know. It could be because the weather's changed. It's got quite cold in the mornings. Um, it could be a nutritional issue, although we, we're putting them on high protein. They're on high protein food. Um, it can be a, a bacterial thing or it could be a, a viral uh, issue. So we do what we can. Uh, just another part of the adventure here in rural Thailand. Stuff that you're learning all the time of how to take care of the animals and what goes wrong with the animals sometimes. You know, now we had it with the pigs before where we've had problems and now we know how to treat the pigs and we have no problems anymore. But it's just a learning phase when you're living this kind of lifestyle.
So that's two for her, that was quite easy. And let's hope it sorts her out. We hope it's not botulism. Botulism can actually spread from chicken to human too. So you have to wash your hands, be careful. It's mainly if it's contact with mucous membranes like the nose or into the mouth. And it's usually associated with eating the, the chicken with botulism. I don't, I don't personally think this is botulism. That leads to like a muscle paralysis, the chicken falls over, but I, I don't think it is botulism. Damo does think it is botulism. I should probably be wearing gloves for that reason, but I'm pretty convinced it's not. It's quite rare to have botulism. So that's all the birds dosed and some vitamins in the water there. Nicely dosed. We're hoping that we don't lose any more of the flock, but I can see some of them are not in great shape. They just seem like a little bit lethargic, a little bit slow. This one here, I can tell it's just hanging out on its own. It's not interested in eating. And it's closing its eyes for long periods. This is sick. That's sick behavior from a bird for sure. This little one here is not actually a chick. We bought it at the same time as we bought all the other ones, but it must have some just difficulty growing. It's exactly the same age as all the other ones, but it's tiny, you see. So I'm just hoping they're gonna be okay now and live to see another day. So it's been over three years, guys, this channel, YouTube. And just think when this was a bare patch of mud and there's nothing on it. Three Christmases here. I mean, some of you have been watching the channel for, for three years. In fact, if you've been watching the channel for over a year, do leave us a comment below these, these channels that we're doing. If you've been watching for over a year, leave us a comment below where you're from, where you're watching from. Um, a lot has happened. <laughs> the thing is, when you vlog your life, you know, we built the house, we've had babies, we've um, one thing after another, you know. When you vlog your life, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you, stuff happens and you don't know, you don't plan it. So it's a mystery to me what next week's vlog will be, you know, or what next month's vlog will be. But we've enjoyed sharing it along the way. You know, we've enjoyed doing this this YouTube channel. To be honest, it's been a bit stressful from sometimes. Like when you're building a house and having a baby at the same time and you're filming it and putting it online, like it's quite a stressful, stressful thing, you know. And we've seen ups and downs in the channel. You know, I personally think that Thailand has been vlogged to death. So I think that I think that content creators they can focus on Thailand so much, but then they gotta do their own thing. Like they've got to express their own personality and there's so many different types of people and personality types, you know, on YouTube. But the whole Thailand thing, I mean, I turn on YouTube now and because the channel is a, Th a Thailand YouTuber channel. Although the channel started Naked Guru and the main channel, Life in Real Thailand, they actually st st I came on YouTube to talk about Entheogens and it started as a podcast. So it just morphed into this kind of vlog about our life. But yeah, Thailand, I just feel like I, I get recommended all of these different new videos and they all just seem to be about the same thing like we we and I, I count myself in, included in this I feel like we've covered all topics you know we've done the whole cost of living thing we've done the whole we've covered a lot you know if you look at all the Thailand vloggers we've covered a lot and now sometimes it just feels like when the content's Thai based it's just like the regurgitation of the same old same old or, you know, there's, there's times where our content can just feel a little bit, what's the word, superficial. You know, how many times can you go around eating noodles and like being really super enthusiastic about like a temple? <laughs> now, I don't know, there are people out there that, there are vloggers that are, are actually excited and like, like you know, they've just come traveling and stuff, so. It's really new and refreshing and um, they're excited about the temple or the noodle. But, I mean, really, once you've seen it, I mean, those vlogs do still do well, don't get me wrong. 
like I think getting hooked on a tree there I think they speak to a lot of people that don't get to travel a lot and want to travel the world I think you know Thailand is uh, it's one of those dream countries you know to come and travel I think a lot of my content has been based more on kind of moving here but even that, there's a lot of content creators covering the whole moving here and living here. Have on. It's been vlogged to death, our Thailand. Um, but that won't stop. That won't stop us putting our content out. I, li I like to think that our channel is not just like vlogging Thailand. You know, I, I like to think that these channels are, well, they're kind of bio art. Are they autobiographical or biographical? I guess they're autobiographical in terms of, especially Nikki Guru, is about me and about my family. But I think they're also speaking to a certain dream that a lot of us have to escape the city and live kind of a more rural, um, away from everybody existence. I guess they speak to that a little bit. I think the channel speak to people that have maybe fallen in love with a Thai and you know they've got a, a long-term plan or even a short-term plan to come over and live here with their loved one whether it's to develop family land or it's to buy some land with a partner and just live away from from pit people and busy I think the channel speaks to that I think the channels and just showing the family, the nature, what it is to live in peace. Um, I think there's more to it than just Thailand. I'd like to think that Thailand is just a part of these channels, which have smaller audiences, you know, less subscribers than your big Thailand YouTubers. But I always see the same names in the comments and I always see the same people liking the content and you know, reaching out and that tells me that there's a, an engaged audience. I think if there was no engaged audience, I wouldn't bother doing it, you know. Um, certainly these channels, I don't do to have any kind of fame. There is an element on YouTube, like with vloggers that maybe want to be famous. You know, they, they, they get off on the, I mean, there are some artists, so some people love to create the videography and they love it for the art. Um, some people do it because they want to be famous, like they want to be well known. Actually, like that's probably the least reason that that we want to do it. I mean, I think one of the main things for me is the creation of the content is important. The documentation of it for um, the kids, the the fact that um, you know the universe is a creative it's a creative force, and so. I feel like we get back a certain level of support for our creation as well. So I think that's that's another like key motivator with it. But I'd like to think that the channel is not just a Thailand vlog channel, you know. I think that you know more and more Thailand is being vlogged to death. And I think the Philippines as well, that's another one that seems to be done a lot of. And you, you're really covered, you're covered in Thailand of all areas. Whether it's your seedy side of things, or your um, your more rural side of things, you know, whatever floats your boat, you're pretty much covered by most Thailand vloggers. But in the end, I think like the main channels, they have to have some pers particular personality behind them for whatever reason. That personality is a personality; they need that, um, or it just becomes kind of mundane, monotonous. You've heard it all before. Uh, just another Thailand vlog. Sometimes like stating the obvious, I know I'll have, let me just put you down here. I'll probably have subscribers here on the, on this channel, the main channel, that have never been to Thailand, that, that probably know more about Thailand than a lot of people that live here <laughs> because they watch all of the vlogs and they've seen so many times all the ins and outs. Maybe they're planning for the retirement or whatnot. Maybe they've only been here a couple of times and, and yet they know more than a lot of people that live here. Like because the information that... Thailand vloggers put out there I mean you're getting all your details really from the more kind of obvious I mean there's a lot of obvious stuff I mean just like the food stuff for me is kind of just obvious like how much is a noodle and um, that kind of thing 
So I think that that's the obvious stuff. But then you're getting more and more complex information now. You know, there's there's the legal side of things. I know it's a few channels, and I watch a few channels which discuss the legal sides of, of things in Thailand. Starting up a company, you know, forming your own company, dealing with the um, tax issues that are coming in next year. A lot of people have asked my opinion on the whole tax thing, and I'm like. You wouldn't ask my opinion on how to fix your car, you know, or you wouldn't ask my opinion on your heart surgery. And that's because I don't know shit about shit, really. Like, I just know what we have planned for, for my family in that, in that, in that case, for, for the tax situation. But I'm no expert on these sorts of things. So you've got, like, Thailand vloggers covering this. Then you've got your travel vloggers that, you know, do the tourist side of things um but yeah i think exceedingly like there's not much new there's not much new that i'm seeing you know i'd like to think that our channel is a bit of a property development channel too after building the cottage and then doing the farmhouse i think there's only a few channels that are comprehensively covering the whole building side of things and the costs associated with that so i hope that we're um with that too and i know that people sometimes just tune in to catch up with the family i don't know what you think a lot of you that watch this channel you watch other channels, you watch a lot of Thailand-based content. Do you feel like it's being vlogged to death? Are you hearing the same things over and over again? Or are you seeing fresh new stuff, surprisingly new stuff? Um, I mean, the stuff we put together for YouTube is really just our life. So we, we kind of want to keep our lives fresh and interesting. We don't want to get stagnant. So that's why we're renovating the farmhouse and, you know, We've had another baby and we've got the village Christmas party coming up. We've, we try to keep kind of busy and active. So it's not like, oh, we're doing those things for YouTube. We're, our approach is quite different. We are picking up the camera and filming our life and then putting that on YouTube. So it's uh, some content creators, and I've done it before in the past, will think, oh, you know, I'm going to go and film something. I'm going to go and choose a topic and I'm going to go and film it. Um, or I'm going to create an idea. And I think when you do that as well, your channel will grow really big. Um, you can really like play on what's in the algorithm, what is, what's doing well on YouTube, you know, copy this, copy that. Like, I, I think we, if we did that and we made that our primary focus, the channels would be a lot bigger, but, um, we're actually, it's the other way around. We're just doing, and then YouTube is coming around us. Like I was coming for a walk today. I pick up the camera and and we have this walk, you know, we we were renovating the farmhouse regardless of YouTube and we document that journey. So Thailand, Thailand being vlogged to death. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I personally don't actually watch many vloggers. There's only one or two that I will check in with and from time to time. So, you know, I often share my current mood, you know, if it's a, if it's down, if it's low, if it's high, current mood is very high. Current mood is like no thinking in the mind at all. Completely peaceful. Just enjoying, you know, no worries. No complicated, oh, we gotta do this. There's no rush. Um, very, very peaceful in the mind at the moment. And watching the kids grow, Otis is sick at the moment. So these kids, they get sick. They pick stuff up from school, you know, and then they're off school, so. Yeah, I think it's life at the moment is just really peaceful and there's not much stress at all. Coming into the Christmas period, we're all ready for it. And um, I'll be renewing my marriage visa as well coming up. So that's something to do, but no stress. Um, another year, another year, another year in Thailand and another year on, on YouTube um, with you guys. Another year on the farm. The year in rural, enjoying the peace. I mean, I have to say, about six months ago, there was a period where I was kind of losing my shit. Where I was like, oh, hold on a minute, this, this, is, this is not right. We should be doing something more, you know. But then I kind of got over it. And um, I think it was just like stress of just having the baby and finishing the house. And it was like quite chaotic and it's quite an expensive time as well. So you're like... You know, you freak out. <laughs> now everything's good. We're back to things are simple and there's routine and, you know, the kids are happy. That's the main thing. That's what you care about, isn't it? You just want to see your kids happy. 
that's what I do. I want to see Damo happy. I want to see the kids happy. And, you know, if they're happy, I'm happy. It's like we live on a little ark. Uh, I call it our ark sometimes, the Shire. I've got the many names for it, our place. But it's like we live on a little ark and we're kind of like self-contained. And there's a survival element to it. You know, don't get me wrong, there is a survival element to it because, you know, we grow what we can and then we live below our means. That's another important one, like living below your means is is the important. It doesn't mean you can't have some of life, life's luxuries, you know. We still eat beautiful Thai food. We still enjoy the sunshine. We still have time together as a family, probably more time together than when I was working in corporate. You, you're comfortable, you know, you can put a movie on. All these things cost nothing. But So the quality of life is there. Um, we even go away and adventure and stuff like that. So the quality of life is there. The only difference is you're just living below your means and trying to watch spending and trying to keep the arc going. There's our arc there in the distance. That's how it feels sometimes. So that's the current mood. That's the current feeling. And that's my little discussion on his Thailand being vlogged to death. So I don't know, you decide. What do you think? Um, I just think we, as, as content creators, or even, I mean, that's, that's a, it's a little bit of a label, isn't it? Content, uh, content creator. As people sharing our life on YouTube, like, you've got to find some diversity, something different. You've got to mix it up a little bit. Because um, it just seems very saturated. It seems, I think, that people now come to Thailand just to vlog Thailand. So they actually, because it's so deep in the algorithm, a lot of them come just to... Just to vlog here and I notice some vloggers will leave Thailand and then their views drop and um, then they'll come back because this is where the algorithm is so it kind of dictates the life um, I think I'd be vlogging I did vlog in England when I was in England but I think I'd be vlogging no matter which country we we're in um, because we vlog in the family really and doing what we're doing so yeah I hope that Thailand is just a coincidental facet of of the content and now as the sun sets I'll, I'll bid you guys farewell we've had the update on the farmhouse and the electric and water situation plus baby turkeys have come and they're looking great and it's an update on life here and how it's going which i can say i'm very grateful for I'm feeling very blessed and thanks to all you guys the subscribers the people that have been here you know for long even sh long and short periods you've been around on the channel supporting the channels supporting the families like you guys matter to us a lot more than the hate we've received and the negative comments and all of that stuff you know like it, it's um when i see the number of likes on some videos like some of our videos that's getting 20,000 views and you're getting 1,000 people click the like button is that's a, that's a thousand people that took time out of the day to watch the video and click that like like button and that we really appreciate that you know and that really motivates us to keep producing content if you've not seen my small documentary my short documentary on rice whiskey um, check it out it's on the main channel um, I'll put a link below in the description too and yeah we just thank you for your support through it all and whether thailand is being vlogged to death or not we love thailand and so there's definitely a good load of us that we don't mind we don't mind keeping making content about thailand it's such a rich and diverse place too that there's always content to make so thailand vloggers keep it coming i think it's getting to the point now where nearly everybody is every expat is a thailand vlogger so I got the kids here playing. They're loving it. So yeah, so we, we really appreciate the support. Thanks for coming along for the journey and hope you're well.